All right. Uh, good afternoon, Anna, Charles, Jonathan, Narisa, and Noriel. And no look now. Nasa huling linggo na tayo ng Abril. And uh, next week, it's going to be May na. So uh, that means there would be lots of, uh, of requirements that will be due, especially for you guys. Uh, alam ko, uh, nasa major stage na kayo. At malamang pare-paras kami ng kalendaryo. Pasaway yung mga math teachers. Ano? Alos <laughs> sabay-sabay yung mga requirements. But uh, sometimes that cannot be helped, even if we don't want it to be that way. Uh, like me, nasa, nasa gitna ako ngayon ng isang dilemma o isang problema. Kasi I think we can finish module uh, or this, uh, this unit, unit number three, uh, probably next week. And so that means I can give you the problem set towards the end of next week for submission week after next. Now, the quandary I am having is mukhang ganun din yung timing ng Math uh, 175. So, familiar names na nakikita ko sa, sa meeting natin and they are also taking 175 from me this semester. So, yun yung problema ko, guys. Um, baka magsabay. Uh, kung may suggestion kayo paano natin ma-avoid yung pagkakasabay niya, uh, let me know because I'm really thinking about it. Uh, pag masyado kasing malayo yung submission ay uh, <clears throat> parang mahirap na rin. Pero let's see. Okay lang ba? Uh, pero sige, dapat siguro sa 175 ko to erase. Ano? So but definitely dahil una ko nakausap itong 155 classes, the schedule will be this. So kindly mark it on your calendars. I'm going to give you problem set number two uh, towards the end of next week. I'll probably give you... Um, four to five working days to finish it and submit it. So expect that it will be due week after next. Tapos kami na lang sa 175 yung mga problema kung ano yung gagawin namin. Uh, kung kaya nung mga, kung kaya naman nila na pagsabayin, then that's better, right? Alam ko na naman, sinubok na kayo ng pandemia at alam yun na yung kalakaran sa online classes na halos sabay-sabay yung requirements. But I don't want to do that to you, pero I'm left with few options. So if you have some ideas, let me know, okay? But for 155, let's set it uh, next week. Bibigay ko yung problem set number two. And speaking of housekeeping matters, uh, homework number four uh, is due later tonight. So hopefully you guys are almost done with it. If not, you already submitted it. May nakita na ako mga nag-submit, pero um, di ko pa siya nagagalaw. Uh, I'll try to do it. No, di ko pala magagawa mamaya kasi... Magka-cramming ako ng Math 175 lecture for tomorrow. Susulat ko yung module. Uh, so probably I'll start grading it tomorrow. Yun yung problema ko sa, sa online classes. Ano? Ang ganda sana na pwede akong bagong gising tapos magla-klase na. Problema ko yung modules. Kailangan i-upload ko siya before. Hindi ka tulad dati sa on, sa face-to-face -face na papasok ako tapos wala akong i-prepare na na slides or notes before uh, going to class, tapos on the spot na lang yung klase. But anyway, and I guess uh, all of us are uh, are making small adjustments. But that would be the things that uh, you should look forward to. Problem set number two next week, and homework number four later tonight. So, uh, natanong na nyo ba kung saan tayo natapos? I think we, we met the Dirichlet function last time, and that's where we stopped. Because we were into uh, discussing limits in another light. We said na ngayon sa so 155, mas malalim na yung pagtingin natin sa limits. Kasi um, uh, dinefine na natin yung limits para sa lahat ng mga functions na, or para sa lahat ng mga functions na ang domain ay nagko-contain ng, or na yung, yung derived set ng domain will contain the number x sub 0 or the number c kung saan natin uh, in-evaluate yung limit. Hindi natin ito nagawa sa math 36 kasi doon kailangan define yung, isa, yung, yung function natin sa isang open interval containing the number of interest. But at this particular point, we don't care too much about the structure of the domain. All we want is that the number of interest, uh, we denote it by c or x sub 0 sometimes, is a limit point of the given domain. And so we will cater to a lot more um, uh, to a bigger class of functions kung saan natin kukomputin yung limits. And then last time we talked about how the uh, concept of limits of functions uh, are uh, or is related to the concept of limits of sequences. And we have established a, uh, a uh, an equivalence theorem between the two. Sabi natin, 
Ah, yung limit ng isang function is x approaches c ay equal kay l if and only if lahat ng sequence na nandun sa domain that converges to x sub 0 will also converge to or will have a sequence of function values that will converge to the number l. Okay? And then this gave us some uh, some um, some easy avenue in order to prove theorems about limits of functions na dumaraan tayo sa theorem 3.1. Tapos, gagamitin natin yung theorems mula sa section 2. Tapos, i-convert lang natin yung conclusion na makukuha natin dun sa previous theorems using theorem 3.1 back into statements involving limits of functions. Okay? So, ganun din yung makikita natin for the remainder of the uh, of the unit. So, lagi tayo nag-extend. Na-meet natin sa math 36, extend natin in the context of 155, and then we'll prove some theorems. And the proofs usually will go back into sequences, okay? Now, but before going there, uh, sinning it yata to last semester, uh, uh, thank you, Charles. Tapos na nga tayo kay Dirichlet function. Pero, uh, hindi pa natin na tingnan yung definition 3.2, ano? But briefly, definition 3.2 tells us yung one-sided limits na nakilala naman natin from math uh, 36. So, una, kailangan ko muna yung konsepto ng... Uh, ng left limit point at saka right limit point. So we say that a number x, uh -huh, I think my screen froze ulit. So sorry guys, uh, I'll restart my uh, screen share. Ito pa isang problema ng uh, pag-umulan. Naapektuhan yung internet connection ko. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, hmm. But hopefully, hindi putol-putol yung audio. Pakisabihin na lang ako na puputol ako mid-sentence so I can repeat what I said. Okay? Now, I hope you can see uh, definition 3.2 on your screens. Ito yung konsepto ng left-hand limit point at saka right-hand limit point. In a nutshell, ang isang number ay left limit point ng isang set. Kung nagkukumpul-kumpulan yung mga elements ng set na yon sa kaliwa ng number na yun. All right? So basically, um, it is a left limit point if and only if there is a left delta neighborhood. So yung left delta neighborhood nagsisimula yun sa x sub 0 minus delta papunta kay x sub 0. So parang kalahati siya ng epsilon neighborhood, right? So siya yung epsilon neighborhood pero kalahati lang. Siya yung nasa kaliwa, right? So it will be a left limit point if any left delta neighborhood, okay, or half... Uh, Delta neighborhood to the left, or whatever we want to call this, but the interval x sub zero minus delta comma x sub zero will contain points of a other than x sub zero. So kapag kaniyari yon for any choice of delta, ibig sabihin left limit point c a. And similarly, siya magiging right limit point kapag ka yung kalahati ng mga eps ng kahit anong epsilon neighborhood kay um, around uh, x sub zero. May mga elements na nagkukumpul-kumpulan si A dun sa kanan nung uh, limit point na yun. So basically, meron kang kahit anong epsilon neighborhood, merong mga elements si A aside from X sub 0 itself na naninirahan dun sa kanan na kalahati nung epsilon neighborhood na yun. Okay? So from here, we can say that if, uh, if a number is a left limit point, automatic na siya ay limit point. Kapag kang isang function ay right limit point, automatic na siya ay limit point. But the, but the uh, converse is not true. Kung meron kang isang limit point, hindi tayo sure kung siya ay left limit point at kung siya ay right limit point. Pusibling isa lang siya dun sa dalawa, pusibling ang hindi siya. Uh, bakit yun nangyayari? Um, halimbawa, si uh, zero to positive infinity. All right. So zero to positive infinity. Si zero ay limit point ng set na yon Kasi uh, any epsilon neighborhood around zero will contain points of that uh, that set, right? So yung close interval zero to positive infinity, tawagin natin itong E, all right? So pag nag-drawing ako ng epsilon neighborhood around zero, there will be infinitely members of the set uh, zero to positive infinity for that epsilon neighborhood. So that means zero is a limit point, okay? But zero is not a left limit point. Bakit hindi siya left limit point? Kasi kapag ka kumuha ko ng epsilon neighborhood, kinuha ko yung left half nun, yun yung tinatawag natin na uh, 
Delta neighborhood to the left. Ito yung Delta neighborhood, itong shaded. Okay? At wala yung laman na elements ni E aside from zero because it totally doesn't contain any elements of uh, the set E. Meanwhile, zero is a right limit point kasi naman, kumuha ka ng kahit na anong element, uh, epsilon neighborhood, kunin mo yung right half nun, laging may makokontain na element yung right half na yon ni set E. So basically, zero is a limit point, and in particular, it is a right limit point, but it is not a left limit point. All right? So with this concept of one-sided limit points, pwede natin extend yung definition ng one-sided limits. Okay? Now here, we will uh, let f be a function defined in some set A, of which x sub 0 is a left limit point of. All right? Then we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches that limit point coming from the left is equal to L, even only if for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for every member x of the left delta neighborhood, or basically, pwede mo tong translate na for all x such that x uh, x sub zero minus x is less than delta, all right? So, uh, but greater than zero, okay? So, ibig sabihin si x ay surely nasa kaliwa ni, uh, ni x sub zero para maging positive itong difference na to. Then, the epsilon uh, the epsilon inequality holds. And then, if this is the case, then we say L is a left-hand limit. Okay. Now, in this, uh, in this sense, we can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches uh, zero from the left, the square root of x doesn't exist. Kasi in the first place, hindi nga siya left limit point. Okay? Now, uh, the right limit point can be defined similarly. So, gawin nyo lang tong si x sub 0 ay right limit point. Tapos, yung limit from the right yung define natin. And then, this inequality will be modified as x minus x sub 0. Uh, kasi ngayon naman, dapat si x yung nasa kanan, nasa kaliwa si x sub 0. So this guy is always positive, and the epsilon uh, definition should still work. Okay, so yun yung left uh, left hand sa right hand limit. So in summary, or as illustration, we can say that the limit of square root of x as x approaches zero from the left does not exist because uh, zero is not a left limit point. So we we uh, this case is not covered by the definition. So they shouldn't exist. However, the limit of square root of x as x approaches zero from the right is equal to zero. And actually, we have concluded last time that per our definitions and conventions here, the limit of square root of x as x approaches zero is equal to zero. So, medyo, ano to, medyo mind boggling, especially if you're attached to the math 36. Ano? So, pero let go nyo na yung math 36. So, dito na tayo sa mas generic na formulation ng limits and continuity. All right? And then there's a theorem here, theorem uh, 3.2. This tells us that if x sub 0 is both a left and a right limit point, then the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 is equal to L, even only if the left hand and the right hand limit are both equal to L. Okay? Ito yung parang analog ng nasa math 36 na para masabi natin that the limit exists, kinukuha natin yung limit from the left at saka limit from the right. However, there are technical subtleties that will give us, uh, that give some noticeable and significant uh, departure mula dun sa conclusions natin sa math 36. In particular, you might be, uh, you might be telling me, okay, Sir, kanina naniwala ako dyan sa tatlong pinagsusulat mo kasi para nagbe-make sense naman siya. Pero bakit dadalihan mo kami ngayon ng theorem 3.2 na ganyan yung itsura? Na dapat pala maging equal yung left hand at saka right hand limit para mag-exist mag yung two-sided limits. So hindi ba tayo, sir, nagkakalokohan dito? Meron ba dyang fake news? Alin dyan sa dalawa? Yung example mo ng square root of x o yung theorem 3.2. Uh, can anyone uh, reconcile those two facts? Bakit walang contradiction dito sa mga pinagsusulat kong ito? Ayun pala, if you have no access dun sa meeting chat and you want to participate, 
Uh, pwedeng um, pwedeng uh, i-chat nyo ako sa Google, uh, sa Google Chats. So, um, naka-open naman yung isa kong window ng Google Chats. Hindi uh, ko alam kung uh, wala akong masyadong friends na bagong sudyante sa sa Facebook. So, hindi kayo makapag-messenger siguro sa akin. Um, pwede sana sa Twitter, no? Mag-hashtag lang tayo. Pero anyway, masyado ng social media savvy. But anyway, yeah, you can use Google Chats na lang if you want to participate. Now, uh, anybody? Or, or naguguluhan din? Tinatrya niyong i-absorb. Okay, thank you, Anna. Yeah, uh, tama si Anna. Sabi niya sa chat ay... Uh, Kasi si zero ay hindi left limit point. And basically here, Theorem 3.2 has the following preamble. Dapat si x sub zero ay parehas na left limit point at saka right limit point. We know that zero is a limit point. But again, being a limit point is not a guarantee that you'll be a right limit point nor a right limit point. So tama, hindi mag-apply yung Theorem 3.2 kay, uh, kay, uh, kay zero with respect to square root of x because zero is not a left limit point. So th this will not exist. And since this doesn't exist, there's no point in comparing the right-hand limit with the left-hand limit, which doesn't exist. Ano? So mahirap makipagkompetensya sa hindi naman nag -e exist So uh, kaya wag natin yung hanapin. Yun yung isa sa mga problema ko sa MAT 36. Ano? Though, ano siya, ganun talaga yung development sa elementary calculus, but I don't think it's fair na kapag ka hindi nag -e exist yung left-hand limit, hindi na rin mag-exist yung two-sided limit um, just because wala nga siyang daraan ng graph sa kaliwa. But essentially, ito yung phoenix natin dito sa theory natin sa math uh, 175. Ah, sorry, math 155. Okay, and I think this will end the uh, the discussion about limits. So I'll proceed tayo sa konsepto ng continuity. Uh, let me just sip my coffee. <clears throat> All right. So tingnan natin. Uh, paano naman natin i-reconstruct -re yung konsepto ng continuity vis-a-vis -vis the the mathematical maturity that we already have right now, okay? Uh, sa Math 36 sabi natin, ah, ganito lang yan, madali lang yan. Para malam ang isang function ay continuous if and only if you can draw its graph without lifting your pen. So basically, that's our intuitive notion of continuity, and probably that's that's the reason why mathematicians called uh, such functions to be continuous. Kasi kaya mong idrawing siya ng tuloy-tuloy. Kaya mo siyang idrawing ng hindi inaangat yung iyong pencil. Okay? So, and then this is uh, operationalized by looking at definition 3.4. This is your version in Math 36. We say that, uh, actually, siguro sa Math 36 may tatlong bullets yung Math 36 yung definition. Okay, so sabi niya, dapat si f of a ay nag -e exist tapos yung uh, limit ni f of x as x approaches a should exist, tapos third bullet dapat equal yung function value dun sa limit. Alright, so that's how we define it in math, uh, in math 36. Now we just wrote it here in a compact form. So you have a function f defined on an open interval. So that's the very limiting factor, kaya medyo may, may mga butas in theory sa elementary calculus, right? Then we said back then that f is continuous at the number x sub 0 if and only if the limit is equal to the function value. Okay? And then usually, ang continuous functions, ito yung tinatawag natin ng mga nice functions. Kasi ang daming posible mangyari kapag ka continuous ang isang function. right? Most of the results are uh, contingent upon the continuity of a function. Sila yung mga well-behaved at magandang pag -aralan. That's why in the history of uh, calculus, uh, usually, ang kanilang pinag-aralan lang during the early days of calculus ay yung mga continuous functions because everything there uh, seems to, uh, to to flow smoothly, all right? Tapos hindi nila nakita yung need para sa mga, uh, para pag-aralan yung properties ng discontinuous functions kasi parang sa mga modeling nila ng mga panahon na yon, lahat ng models nila ay mga continuous. Pero as uh, our understanding of the physical universe and of our a mathematical theory na discover ng mga mathematicians, physicists, and other scientists na hindi naman pala lahat ng bagay sa mundo ay model ng continuous functions, right? And thus, uh, nagkaroon din ng need to study 
uh, functions with discontinuities, right? So kaya na uh, kaya na kinailangan ni Cushy, ni uh, ni Weierstrass at saka um uh, nakalimutan ko pa yung isa. Ah, uh, magagalit 'yan sa akin. Yung uh, kung bakit nila inimbento yung continuity, all right? So pero ito yung uh, mas generic na definition ng continuity, yun yung definition 3.5 at siya yung gagamitin natin sa 155, okay? Let's see how it reads. Preamble. We consider a function f whose domain is a set E, all right? And we say that f is continuous at a point x sub 0 in its domain if and only if for any epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0. So that sounds very familiar. That's just the um, the usual parang preamble ng limit, all right? Such that for all x's in the domain satisfying the delta inequality, then we will have the epsilon inequality. So it seems that it is not too far from the definition of the limit. Kung titingnan nyo yung mga mathematical statements dito, parang wala namang pinagkaiba, no? So meron ka pa rin delta inequality na wala lang yung zero less than. Hindi mo na kailangan yung zero less than because we are assuming that x sub zero is part of the domain. Yung papaling isang malaking pagbabago. Here we are already assuming that x sub zero is an element of the domain. Previously, in allow natin na ma-define yung limit kahit si x sub zero ay hindi kasama sa domain. All that is required is that for x sub zero be a limit point of the set E. And if E is not closed, then x sub zero might not be part of the, the set E, all right? Pero ito, sa definition nito ng continuity, posible lang maging continuous ang isang function sa isang number sa kanyang domain. And that uh, element of the domain need not be a limit point. So ito yung medyo isang loophole no uh, definition that we can exploit later. So si x sub 0, ay, ang kailangan namang ay part siya ng domain, right? Uh, tapos, kailangan natin ipakita na pagkakumuha tayo ng kahit na nung x doon sa domain ni, uh, ni, ni f, that is within delta units away from the fixed x sub 0, then we will have this epsilon inequality. Now, this epsilon inequality only varied with the one in the definition of the limit with the subtrahend. Ang subtrahend natin before ay L, which is the purported limit. Pero... Uh, gagamitin natin yung natutunan natin sa 36 na kapag ka continuous equal yung function value sa limit. So instead of calling it L, let's just look, call it f of x sub 0. And that's why it's very crucial that x sub 0 is not just a limit point, but it must guarantee to be inside a set para maging defined yung f of x sub 0. But other than those technical subtleties, uh, the same tricks can be done uh, para mag-prove ng continuity at a number. So, meron pa rin tayong preliminary analysis. The only thing that will change is that instead of a uh, arbitrary number L or kung ano mang L kung saan man siya kunin, ang gagawin nating subtrahin ay yung function value nung, uh, nung, uh, yung function value dun sa given number at which we are testing the continuity of the function f. Okay? Para mali yung English ko. Ang dami kong prepositions dun. But essentially, I hope you get the point. Okay. Now, let's look at an example uh, para i-operationalize yung pinagsasabi kong yun. Consider natin itong function g na to. Siya ay si uh, x times sine 1 over x kapag ka si x ay hindi 0. At siya ay si 0 if si x ay equal kay 0. Tapos gusto natin ipakita na si g ay continuous sa 0. Okay, hindi ko na gagawin yung sa math 36 na tatlong bullets. So, gagamitin natin yung definition 3.5 para ma-prove na continuous si G K0. Okay? Now, we will start with the preliminary analysis as always. And then the proof is already um, provided in the, uh, in, the hand, uh, in the in the lecture notes. So, I'll leave the writing to you guys. You can either try to translate my preliminary analysis into a formal proof. That will be a great exercise for you. Or uh, if you are uh, if you're still having troubles with it, you can read through what the, uh, how it was written in the module. Okay. Now, remember, in any preliminary analysis, we'll start by assuming that we are given an epsilon greater than zero. Okay. And write our goal. What's our goal? We want to find a delta greater than zero such that what? Such that for all element of the domain, 
Okay, we have the following. Absolute value of X minus X sub zero less than Delta implies epsilon inequality minus, uh, sorry, G na nga pala yung uh, function dito, G of X minus G of zero less than epsilon. That's what we want to get, right? But uh, another thing, I can replace X sub zero na dito by zero. Okay. Kasi alam ko na na, tinetest natin for continuity IK zero, kaya naman G of zero yung nilagay ko rito. Okay? Then we're uh, we are working backwards, meaning we want to, to get a condition on, uh, on delta, all right? And usually we will relate delta and epsilon with each other. And we said that the strategy to do that is to manipulate this guy, the right hand side or uh, the left hand side of the epsilon inequality so that it will involve the left hand side of the delta inequality. Yung nasa delta inequality natin ay mari reduce sa absolute value of x. So my goal is to manipulate this side para magkaroon siya ng absolute value of x because once I have an absolute value of x here, pwede ko yung palitan ng delta. All right? Now, Let's try to do that. I'll simplify this guy. Okay. Pag sinimplify ko yan ang g of x natin, I want. Actually, mahati pala to sa dalawang cases, right? Kasi kapag ka si x ay 0, si g of x ay 0. Kapag ka si x ay hindi 0, then si g of x ay x sine 1 over x. I need to split the proof, uh, the, the PA to two parts because I need to find a delta for any x in E. So I need to manipulate it para sa lahat ng x na nanggagaling dun sa domain. Okay? So case 1 ay para kay x equals 0. Kapag kasi x ay equal kay 0, then our uh, epsilon or the left-hand side of the epsilon inequality will just be g of 0 minus g of 0. That is equal to 0. And obviously, this will be, this will be less than epsilon for any epsilon greater than 0. So that means... Kapag ka si x ay equal kay 0, wala nang tanong-tanong yan. Kag, pag binigyan ka ng epsilon, you can choose any delta. Right? Uh, yeah, you can choose any delta. Kasi kapag ka si... Uh, uh, hold on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, you can choose any delta. Kapag ka si x ay equal kay 0. Kasi kapag ka si x ay equal kay 0... Uh, sure ka na na ito ay magiging 0 greater than delta. Okay, so you can choose really any delta greater than 0. And regardless of your choice of delta, dahil si x naman ay fixed sa 0, so this guy will always be 0 less than epsilon. Okay, so that's the easy part. Now, hindi uh, naman masyadong mahirap, uh, pero... Uh, a little more tedious than the previous case is the case that x is not equal to zero. But again, this will just be g of x, but g of x is x times sine of one over x minus g of zero, but we know that g of zero is zero, okay? So ito yung mangyayaring left-hand side natin. Tapos, so zero lang naman yung subtrahend, so tanggalin ko na siya. Tapos gusto ko tong masulat involving uh, the factor uh, squared, uh, absolute value of x. And that's fine. I can just use properties of absolute value to write it this way. And then I know that this would be uh, bounded by a factor of delta. Bakit siya mababound by a factor of delta? Because we are sure that square uh, that the absolute value of x is bounded above by delta. So palitan ko to ng mas malaking number, then I have the, uh, then there's a chance that I get a large number, okay? Or a larger number. Now, the problem lies here, pero hindi naman siya kalakihan ng isang problema. You will recognize right away that whatever 1 over x is, however big or however small that number is, when I put that number inside the sine function, it will just be a number between negative 1 and 1. So yung absolute value na to ay hindi lalampas ng 1. All right, so if I replace this by 1, then I'll get a larger number. So basically, this is what we have. So, kapag ka si x pala ay hindi equal kay 0, yung g of x minus g of 0 will always be less than delta. But we want that to be less than epsilon, so we will force delta to be smaller than or equal to epsilon. Okay? So, pag binigyan ka ng epsilon, 
greater than zero, pwede nyo na rin yung choice mo for delta or anything smaller than that. Because uh, if that is the case, then we'll be able to conclude that g of x minus g of zero is less than epsilon. Okay. So, and I think that's uh, what was written in this proof. Okay. Now, ngayon ko lang na-realize uh, na kasi dun sa kabilang klase, nag-insert pa ako rito ng case 1 at case 2. I just realized when I was writing that PA na posible pa lang hindi mo na nga talaga isulat yung case na x equal 0. Because if x is equal na, uh, if x is equal to 0, then the choice of delta, specifically the choice here epsilon, will also work. Okay. So, ang problema ko nga lang pala doon ay ito. Ah, tama, kailangan ko nga siyang ilagay. Kasi look at this, guys. Uh, di ba, i-manipulate ko yung, uh, yung g of x minus g of 0. Pero kakailangan ko yung g of x. Pero g of x uh, is equal, uh, has two possible values. So, kailangan ko itong idugsong siguro na yung absolute value of g of x ay equal sa absolute value na to or k0. Pero it's easy. This is uh, obviously less than epsilon. Tapos ito by PA, alam na natin yan ay less than delta, which was, uh, which we know is equal to epsilon. Okay? So yun yung medyo kulang dito sa proof na to. Because you need to handle the case that g of x is not equal to x sine 1 over x. And that happens when x is equal to 0. Okay? So, any questions? So, I hope one example is enough uh, because this is just really, um, uh, this is really the same as uh, how you prove limits, right? So, yun nga lang, kailangan yung mag-function value evaluation para makuha yung subtrahend. Kasi sa limits, ibibigay ko na yung L. Pero dito, hindi given yung L, pero alam naman natin, g of uh, x sub 0 lang naman, or f of x sub 0, yung magiging subtrahend. So, this is very much similar in spirit to what we have uh, last time. Okay? So, kung wala kayong uh, reactions on that, uh, I'll go to the next uh, example. Okay pa ba? Okay. Now, Yung remark 3.5 uh, probably will uh, debunk yung, uh, yung ating uh, characterization ng continuous functions to be those and only those functions that can be drawn without lifting our pen. Okay? We are admitting here a more generic definition for the limits, so hindi na mag apply yung, yung pang check natin by just looking at the graph. Well, one direction of that will, will still work. Na kapag ka na drawing natin yung graph without lifting our pen, then we, we can say na yung excess na nadaanan nung, nung graph ay continuous dun palagi yung function, right? So if I have a function, I draw its graph, so lahat ng excess corresponding to this function values continuous yung function dyan. No difference. But the converse will not hold now. Okay? Kapag ka siya ay hindi na natin kayang i-drawing nang hindi umaangat yung pen natin, hindi ibig sabihin na discontinuous na yung function. Though hindi rin naman automatic na continuous siya. There could be some functions that require lifting of pens in order to be drawn yung graph nila, pero continuous pa rin siya following our definition. And this is, uh, this is caused by the relaxation ng condition para sa continuity at a number. Kasi sa continuity at a number, yung number kung saan natin tinetest yung continuity ay kailangan namang maging miyembro ng domain. Hindi siya necessarily isang limit point. Okay? At yun yung butas na inaddress ng remark 3.5. That any function will be continuous at any isolated point of its domain. Okay, if you can, uh, if you can recall, ang um, isolated points, ito yung mga points ng isang set na hindi naman limit points. All right. Tapos ang sinasabi natin dito sa remark, automatic. Kapag ka nakakita ka ng isolated point sa kanyang, uh, ng kanyang domain, ay continuous lagi yung function. Okay? And this can happen 
because we are only requiring access to be in the domain. Pag park ka ng domain, I can tell if the function is continuous at you or not. Hindi ka tulad ng limits. Medyo marikot ito si yung, uh, yung limits. Sa limits kasi kailangan limit point ka. Hindi ka kailangan domain element pero dapat ay uh, limit point ka. Ito naman baliktad. Sa continuity, dapat element ka ng domain, hindi necessary na kailangan limit point ka. Kasi nga, by the provision of the definition, kung ikaw ay isolated point, matic na yun. Continuous na yung function sa'yo. Okay? Now, tingnan natin. Example f. Uh, sorry, function f in this example. Meron tayong function, define siya sa tatlong numbers lang. Kay 1, kay 2, at saka kay 3. Yung function value ni 1 ay 1, function value ni 2 ay 3, function value ni 3 ay 2. Okay. And then we will show that f is continuous at 2. Obviously, 2 is uh, an isolated point. Kasi yung intuitive notion natin ng isolated point, so ito yung domain. Plot ko yung points ng domain. 1, 2, and 3. Uh, sabi natin, isolated point yan kapag kaya ko siyang i-isolate sa isang neighborhood. Na siya lang yung tao. Alright, medyo introvert yung mga isolated points. So, no. So, dito, pwede kong piliin yung epsilon neighborhood to be this neighborhood. Alright? And on that neighborhood, the yellow neighborhood that I have here, nag-iisa lamang yung laman ni set E. And that is 2 itself. So, that makes 2 an isolated point. We have found an open interval or an epsilon neighborhood around 2 that only contains 2. Okay? Wala nang ibang miyembro ng set E na laman uh, na nandun sa yellow interval na to. So, si 2 ay hindi limit point, so therefore, isa siyang isolated point. Now, the key here is this. So, nasa domain siya, kahit hindi siya limit point, kaya nating mag-take na, uh, kaya nating i-test yung continuity. Okay. So, pag kaya na consider tayo na kahit na anong epsilon greater than 0, I can, uh, uh, the, the, the notes is telling us na, okay, kahit anong epsilon greater than 0, makakahanap ka ng isang delta such that the epsilon uh, such that the uh, delta inequality will imply the epsilon inequality, right? So I have a challenge, epsilon greater than zero, and autumn, uh, here I say delta equals one half. We'll see later, or later it will make sense why we choose delta to be equal to one half. Na, ano ba yung requirement? Dapat, sa kahit na nung x na element ni E that is within one half unit away from two, dapat totoo yung epsilon inequality. All right? So dapat for all element of the domain such that absolute value of x minus two is less than one half, dapat totoo yung epsilon inequality. But what is the solution set of this inequality plus the condition na nandun siya sa set E? Sino ba yung mga elements ng domain na makakasatisfy nitong delta inequality na to. Unfortunately, isa lamang yung makakasatisfy niyan. Because pag sinold mo to, dapat yung mga x's is between uh, what? 3 halves and uh, and uh, 5 halves, alright? Timula dito hanggang dito. Pero nag-iisa si 2 na element ng domain na nandun. So isa lang pala yung kailangan nating i-test para dun sa epsilon inequality. Kasi isa lamang yung nakakasatisfy, isang x lang, yung nakakasatisfy nitong dalawang conditions sa to. And namely, that's 2. So that means, let's check the epsilon inequality f of x minus f of 2. Since there's only one candidate for x, and that is 2, plug in mo yan Oh, f of 2 minus f of 2 equal kay 0, equal na siya kay epsilon. So that means, yeah, indeed, f is continuous at 2, though medyo vacuous yung, yung nangyaring proseso. Ano, medyo trivial in a game processor. And the key here is, if you're given an epsilon greater than zero, you choose the delta to be um, to be a sufficiently small number na wala nang ibang laman yung domain, ay uh, yung epsilon neighborhood na yun, or yung delta neighborhood na yun, na element ng domain aside from the given number two or the isolated point two. Okay? So, limbawa, Pwede kong, uh, pwede kong piliin na uh, 8 over 9 yung, yung uh, delta. Kasi pag pinili kong 8 over 9 yung, uh, yung delta, 
isa pa lang din naman na element ng domain ang maninirahan dun sa epsilon uh, dun sa 8 over 9 neighborhood ni 2. Basta wag ka lang lalampas, uh, wag lang masyadong malaki yung delta na magi include ng ibang kapitbahay doon sa doon sa doon sa set. And that is fine because uh, if you go back to the definition of continuity for any epsilon there exists a delta. Makakita ka lamang ng isang delta, right? And it is guaranteed that you can always find such a delta, such a small enough delta, kasi nga isolated point yung, yung, yung numbers sa na consider natin. So isolated siya, meron siyang delta neighborhood, na siya lang yun laman, okay, na element on domain. So ibig sabihin, lagi mag-hold ito para sa kanya. Okay? So, ito yung example ng isang continuous function. Continuous siya sa 1, continuous siya sa 2, continuous siya sa 3. All right? However, when we plot the graph of this function f, it is inevitable that we lift our, our pens, right? Kasi kapag ka daw si x ay 1, function value ay 1. Kapag ka si f ay 2, function value ay 3. So kailangan ko iangat yung pen ko para ma-plot yung 2, 3. Tapos iangat ko ulit siya to plot 3, 2. So ito yung graph ng function f. And per our definition, this is continuous. Okay? Yun yung medyo butas dito. Pero nangyayari lang to kapag uh, may isolated points yung domain. Kasi sure tayo na kapag yung domain mo ay may isolated points, continuous na doon palagi yung given function. Okay? Now, the, the problem with this nice, uh, with this not nice looking uh, Hindi sila gaano kagandahan. Ano, yung graph ng mga continuous functions sa katulad nito. Um, kapag ka yung domain mo ay walang isolated point, then sa ay continuous if and only if you can draw the graph without lifting your pen. Right? Katulad ng mga open intervals. Walang, points, uh, walang isolated points ang open intervals. Kaya kapag ka yung function mo ay defined sa isang interval, necessary and sufficient condition yung pag-draw ng graph without lifting our pen para maging continuous yung function na yan. Okay? But these are just uh, some of the loopholes na kailangan nating uh, kailangan nating i-take note. Okay? So, payag ba kayo doon? <laughs> Natawagin ito na continuous. But actually, payag man kayo o hindi, continuous yan. Alright? Okay, now, moving on. Another definition. Kailan continuous ang isang function sa isang set? Ang isang function ay continuous sa isang set kung... Uh, sorry, ang daming S. Siya ay continuous sa isang set kung siya ay continuous sa lahat ng elements ng set na yun. Alright? So, yun yung sinasabi nitong definition nito. So, and then, um, we will adopt this uh, shorthand notation for continuity. So we say, uh, we read this as F is continuous on the set E, all right? Or more formally, you can say that F belongs to the set of all continuous functions on the set E. So curly C, tapos lagay nyo lang sa loob ng parentheses, ano yung set kung saan continuous yung function F. Okay? And then ito pas. Dahil na atsapwera na siya dun sa usapan sa math 36, so, gawin natin stars, the square root of x dito sa math 155. So, sa example 3.6, papakita natin na si f ay continuous sa kahit anong non-negative real number. Okay? So, essentially, we can say that f is continuous on this closed interval na kanyang domain. Alright. So, but essentially, again, this boils down to, do, to uh, writing a preliminary analysis. Okay? Again, here, uh, we are given an epsilon greater than zero, then we wish to find a delta greater than zero such that for all x's in the domain, uh, and domain at a zero to positive infinity, all right, the absolute value of x minus x sub zero less than delta implies square root of x minus square root of x sub zero less than epsilon okay and we want to do this or we want to do that uh, do this for any arbitrary x sub zero that is in the domain of the function 
So si x at 0, kahit ano siya, pero fixed siya. It's a fixed non-negative real number. Okay? So, all right. So, again, our strategy here is to manipulate the left-hand side of the epsilon inequality and hopefully be able to write it in a form that involves the left-hand side of the delta inequality para madali nating mabound itong difference na to. However, that might be a problem here kasi um, paano natin to masusulat? Hindi tayo pwede mag-factor, all right? Uh, do you guys remember uh, what we usually do whenever dealing with uh, unwanted radican, uh, radicals? Uh, bawal tumingin sa notes. <laughs> ano yung pwede natin gawin? Uh, suggestion ni Charles um, raised to the to an exponent. Uh, that will be difficult, Charles, kasi difference to ng dalawang radicals. Uh, pag in-square ko yan, kailangan ko yung ano, kailangan ko yung special product na a squared uh, minus 2ab plus b squared, right? Unless nasa field tayo of characteristic 2, mag-hold yung freshman's dream, ano? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Pero sorry, one 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 uh, one one eleven yon. So kung di kayo familiar, never mind. All right. Pero yeah, mas gusto ko yung suggestion ni Jonathan. But thanks for trying, Charles. Ah uh, yeah, Jonathan suggested conjugate. Pero vague yung answer mo, Jonathan. Nung gagawin ko sa conjugate. <laughs> but I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, I will multiply this guy by the conjugate over the conjugate. All right. So times. Absolute value of root x plus root of x sub 0 over root of x plus root of x sub 0. Because ito yung makakapag-achieve natin ng gustong mangyari ni Charles na mawala na yung mga square root. When we multiply this uh, or the numerators, okay? So maging absolute value na lang siya ng x minus x sub 0 all over root of x plus root of x sub 0. I am able to... Uh, to get rid of the absolute value bars, kasi naman, ito ay non-negative, ito ay non-negative, pag in ko sila non-negative, so sila lamang yung kanilang absolute value. Okay? And then remember the goal. The goal is to find the, an upper bound para sa bagay na ito. Ano? So ano yung upper bound para sa kanya? Well, there's one reason why we multiplied it by the conjugate over the conjugate. We did so para magamit natin yung delta inequality. And look at this. The numerator is exactly the left-hand side of the delta inequality, which we know to be smaller than delta. So delta is a larger number than the numerator. Okay. So pwede natin siyang palitan. Okay. So remember, gusto natin magkaroon ng mas malaking fraction. Para magkaroon ng mas malaking fraction, what we can do is to increase the numerator but decrease the denominator. That's the easiest way to increase the value of the fraction. Pataasin yung itaas, pababain yung ibaba. Possibly ka pa rin naman makakuha ng mas malaking number pag pinalaki mo yung taas at pinalaki mo yung baba, pero dapat um, mas mabilis yung paglaki ng taas kesa dun sa baba. Alright? Para hindi siya mahatak pababa. So, we're, we're doing it the safe way. Pababain ko na lang yung denominator. Kasi yun, sure ako. Tumaas yung numerator, bumaba yung denominator, tataas yung fraction. Okay? So, how can I make it mas mal... Sorry, konyotik. Paano ka to ma ma magiging mas mapapalaki? Alright? So, what I can do is to, uh, to just erase one of the fact uh, one of the addends here. Kasi dalawang non-negative numbers yan. Pag tinanggal ko yung isa sa kanila, posible na mas malaki na yung makuha ko number. Pero at least equal dun sa previous number. So basically, pagka nagtanggal ako dyan ng isa, sure ako, yung sagot ay less than or equal to the previous sum. Okay? Pero sino yung tatanggalin ko? Si root x o si root x of 0? Now, I will remove the square root of x. Why? Because square root of x is actually uh, a varying number. Nagvavary nag yung quantity na yan. Kasi si x ay kahit na nung x doon sa domain. So it will not be a nice upper bound, kasi nakadepende pa rin siya dun sa variable ng problem. Unlike si x sub 0, si x sub 0 ay arbitrary pero fixed. Kasi siya yung, 
siya yung number kung saan natin ine-evaluate yung limit. Ah, kung saan, siya yung number kung saan tinetest natin yung continuity. Okay, so basically it's fixed on the problem. So we know that this is fixed. It's a number in the domain. So palitan ko siya rito. Okay? Kagawin ko na lang x sub 0. So lumiit yung denominator. So aangat yung value ng fraction. All right? Okay. So now we have this. Kaya lang meron pa lang isang technical uh, difficulty here. I can only do this if x sub 0 is not equal to 0. Because if x sub 0 is equal to 0, then this guy is meaningless. All right? Uh, hindi natin makukuha yung value na yan. So we need a separate analysis when x sub 0 is equal to 0. But I don't think that will be hard. So let's put that uh, on the side first. Tingnan muna natin. So itong number na to ay upper bound para dun sa left-hand side ng epsilon inequality. So what I'll do is to force the issue that that guy is less than epsilon. Okay? So sino ngayon? Yung pipili nating delta or less than or equal to. So we can choose delta to be any number that is less than or equal to root of x sub 0 times epsilon. And this is fine. Because epsilon is given, that's the challenge, epsilon. And the square root of uh, x sub 0 is given in the problem because x sub 0 is fixed. Uh, siya yung element ng domain kung saan natin tinetest yung uh, continuity. So, given to right away from the start. Imagine kung pinalitan ko yan ng x, malaking problema. Kasi si x ay arbitrary, so hindi mo na bound si delta by a constant. Because x is a varying quantity. Isa siyang variable. So, ito yung pipili natin na delta kapag ka si x sub 0 ay hindi equal kay 0. Uh, and then, this will also tell you na hindi to mag-work kapag ka si x sub 0 ay equal kay 0. Kasi kapag ka si x sub 0 ay equal kay 0, ito ay magiging 0. So, basically, hindi nga ba siya mag-work? Hold on. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Ah. Hindi siya mag-work mamaya din sa gagawin ko kasi ang, ang usually ginagawa natin, we take delta to be equal to this guy, right? So if we will do that, and x sub 0 is 0, so this will be 0 time eps, times epsilon. So our delta will be equal to 0, which is not allowed because our, our condition is that delta should be greater than 0, okay? Pero kaya ko pala siyang palusutin, pero hindi ko na masyadong babaguhin yung proof na nandun sa, nandun sa handout, okay? So that's it. So, natitira na lamang ay ano dapat yung piliin natin na epsilon kapag ka si x sub 0 ay equal kay 0. Uh, ano yung kailangan natin piliin na delta, right? So, the PA for that uh, can be done. Actually, it's not that hard. Kapag ka si x sub 0 ay 0, uh, then we'll have, oops, delta inequality. Then, ang gusto nating mapalabas ay f... Uh, Square root of x minus 0 less than epsilon. But this guy is equal to uh, root of x. Pero dito alam natin si x sub 0 ay less than delta. Okay. So del shay less than delta. So this means this is less than square root of delta rin. All right. So kunin nyo lang yung square root ng both sides nito, makukuha mo to. So we need to force that root of delta is less than epsilon. So that means delta is less than or equal chi. I'll just square both sides of this to get rid of the radicand enclosing delta. So this will be epsilon squared. Okay. So kapag ka ang x sub 0 ay equal kay 0, so ang pipilin mo na delta ay epsilon squared. And if you do that, you'll be able to prove the continuous yung function k0. Now, for all other numbers, aside from 0, ang kukunin mo na delta ay square root of x sub 0 times epsilon to prove that it is continuous at that number x sub 0, and that exhausts all elements of the domain. And hence, we can conclude that f is continuous on the set of all non-negative real numbers. All right.
Um, okay lang ba? Uh, babasahin nyo na lang yung formal proof. Actually, pag naintindihan nyo yung preliminary analysis ay ano no, parang uh, madali na yung pagsusulat ng formal proof. Okay? Okay. Ngayon, gagawin ko na yung analog ng ginawa natin last time na itinali ko you are kinwalking relationship between limits of functions and limits of sequences. Okay, so now we have theorem 3.3, which is basically the analog of theorem 3.1. So it's uh, it will give us the uh, the link between limits of sequences and continuity of functions. Okay, so tingnan natin ano ba yung sinasabi ng theorem 3.3. Magconsider ka raw ng isang function f, domain ay e. Tapos si x sub 0 ay isang limit point ni E. Then the function f is continuous at x sub 0 if and only if one of the following is met. So pag may isa dyan sa tatlo na nasatisfy, then si f ay continuous dun sa number mong x sub 0. Okay. Now, yung statement number 1, nothing new. That's the definition of continuity. So alam na natin yan. Statement number two, definition sa matter to six. So, okay lang din yan. Hold din yan dito. And this, uh, this will still be consistent even if we have uh, those uh, those technical differences with the matter to six definition, right? So, pero mag-hold pa rin yan. Consistent pa rin yung, yung theory natin. Now, what I want to focus here is the third statement. And the third statement is what we will refer to as the sequential criterion for continuity of a function. Tapos, ano yung sabi niya? Okay, meron kang isang function f, uh, ang domain ay e, pag kumuha ka ng kahit anong sequence, kay, uh, dun sa domain, sequence of elements of the domain that converge to x sub 0, right? then the sequence of function values ay magko-converge din dapat kay f of x sub 0. Okay? So parang ano siya, no? kamukhang kamukha siya nung uh, nandun sa atin sa, sa definition ng limit. But instead of just an arbitrary L, okay, hindi, na siya dapa, hindi na siya pwedeng kung ano-ano lamang L kung saan nagko-converge yung sequence of function values. Dapat nagko-converge yung sequence of function values dun sa function value ni x sub 0. Alright? Now, just be careful here. Uh, at this particular point, we are requiring x sub 0 to be a limit point. Okay? So, possible ng isang function ay continuous sa hindi isa sa mga isolated points. Alright? Pero mapwera sa mga, is sa mga isolated points kapag ka si x sub 0 ay limit point. Dahil siya ay limit point, sure tayo na merong sequence dun sa domain kung saan nagko-converge yung sequence na yon kay x sub 0. Yun yung characterization natin sa mga limit points. Alright? Tapos, meron ka ng mga x sub n's na nabuo na nagko-converge kay x sub 0. Buuin mo yung sequence ng mga function values nila, f of x1, f of x2, f of x3, f of x4, and so on. Alright? Tapos, observe mo, convergent ba to? And nagko-converge ba siya kay f of x sub 0? And if you can do that, for any sequence x sub n that converges to x sub 0 in the domain of uh, f, then you can say that f is continuous at the number x sub 0. Kaya lang, mahirap siyang gamitin in a forward manner. Bakit? Kasi kailangan kunin mo lahat ng posibleng sequences. Eh, parang imposible naman yung magawa lagi. Ano? Kasi there might be infinitely many sequences that will converge to x sub 0. Tapos kailangan itest mo lahat ba ng sequences na yun ay may nabubuong sequence of function values na nagko-converge kay f of x sub 0. If you can do that for all possible sequences and they all turn out to be convergent to f of x sub 0, then that's the only time you can conclude converge, uh, pagiging continuous. Okay? Mas magandang gamitin yung sequential criterion para itest yung discontinuity. Kasi ang sabi ng statement 3, lahat ng sequences that converges to x sub 0 must have a sequence of function values that converge to f of x sub 0. Now, pag nakakita ka ng isang sequence ng mga xn's na nagko-converge kay x sub 0, ngunit 
yung uh, sequence sa mga function values ay hindi nagko-converge kay f of x of 0, then automatic, f is not continuous at x of 0. It all takes, uh, all it takes is to have uh, just one sequence that converges to x of 0 that gives birth to a sequence of function values that will not converge to f of x of 0. Sufficient na yun para masabi na siya ay discontinuous sa number na x sub 0. Okay? Now, to illustrate, tingnan natin yung example 3.7. Uh, pero tapos na ba kayo sa homework, guys? Um, uh, iginagapang pa rin. <laughs> so, dahil umaten kayo ng meeting today, uh, probably, uh, but uh, hopefully, our discussion about example 3.7 will help you with with the homework problem. Uh, Ipinatern ko talaga dito yung homework para kasi alam ko na schedule yung example 3.7 ngayon para ma ma, ma incentivize yung pagaten yung sa class today, you know? So ano ba yung sinasabi ng example 3.7? Gusto natin ipakita na yung points of discontinuity ng floor function ay the set of integers. So the function f defined here and denoted by this uh, bars and tawag natin dyan ito yung floor function or ito yung floor of x. Kasi nangyayari, we are rounding down yung value ni x. So any real number can be an input to the floor function. So on domain ni f, dito ay set of real numbers because by default we are assuming yung pinakamalaking posibleng set yung gagawin nating domain pag walang binanggat sa problem. And then how does this work? Alimbawa, floor function ni 1, equal yan lang kay 1. Floor function ni 1 half, ay equals of floor function ni 0 0.5. Then we're rounding down. So basically, we're getting the largest integer that is smaller than x. So ano yung pinakamalaking integer na mas, mali na mas maliit kesa kay 0 0.5? Well, the largest such integer is 0. So para na ground down, ini-ignore mo lang yung decimal digits. So kumbaga sa math uh, 174, trunk, ano to? Uh, it's, a, it's a truncation arithmetic. Ano? Tinatanggal lang natin yung mga sobrang decimal digits. Dito tinatanggal na lang natin totally yung mga decimal digits. Pero you need to be a little careful with uh, taking the floor of negative numbers. For instance, you have the floor of negative 0 0.123. Okay? Ang floor ng negative 0 0.123, ito yung pinakamalaking integer na mas maliit kesa kay negative 0 0.123. So this must be negative 1. Kasi nga lagi tayong pababa. Right? Sino yung integer bago yung number neto? So yun yung floor function. Now, the claim in the, uh, in the example is that ang mga points of discontinuity ng function na to ay yung mga integers. So the proof will be twofold. Number one, we need to show that f is indeed discontinuous at every integer. And the second half is that f is continuous at all non-integers. Yun yung magiging, uh, magiging itsura ng proof dito. Well, uh, okay. So para ma-prove na siya ay discontinuous sa mga integers, all right? Gagamitin ko yung sequential criterion. Okay? So, magde-device ako ng isang sequence ng mga x's na magko-converge sa isang integer. Tawagin natin yung integer na yun ay m. So, gusto natin pakita siya ay discontinuous sa mga integers. So, mag-consider tayo ng isang arbitrary pero fixed na integer m. Gusto ko makabuo ng isang sequence na magko-converge kay m. Pero, Yung, function, yung sequence of function values ay hindi magko-converge sa f of m. Pero saan ba equal si f of m? Si m ay integer, ang floor ng kahit anong integer ay yung sarili niya. So we want to come up with a sequence of x's that converges to m, but whose sequence of function values does not, uh, does not converge to m. Marami kang options, pero we need to be careful when selecting. Okay? In this particular case, the, the lecture notes chose to consider the sequence m minus 1 over n. Clearly, this will converge to m. Kasi nga, paliit ng paliit yung minus, all right? So, um, 
palapit to ng palapit kay M. And basically, kung titingnan mo siya sa real number line, kung ito si M, andito yung mga M minus 1 over N. Hindi siya lalampas ng M minus 1, or simula siya kay M minus 1, tapos magiging M minus 1 half, M minus 1 third, and so on. Palapit siya ng palapit kay M. So basically, this will converge to M, pero tingnan natin ano yung sequence ng mga function values. Yung unang term ng sequence ay si M minus 1. M minus 1 is an integer. Okay? So function value ng integer ay sarili niya. So function value ni M minus 1 ay sarili niya. M minus 1. Tapos pag kumuha ko ng isang number na nandito. Alright? Uh, any number that is less than M but greater than M minus 1. Ang function value pa rin nila ay si M minus 1. Okay? Kasi nga, nagre-round down lang tayo. No? So pag meron kang M minus 1 half, ang itsura niya ay M minus 1.5. Right? Parang ganun. M minus 1, tapos may dot 5. So pag tinanggal mo yung dot 5, magiging M minus 1 na lamang siya. So nare-round down talaga. So pag lumampas ka ng M minus 1, pero hindi ka umabot ng M, yung function value mo under the floor function is still M minus 1. Okay? And then you will see here na, ah, okay, Ang mga function values o yung mga function values ng m minus 1 over n ay laging equal lamang kay m minus 1. Agree? So that means yung sequence ay constant sequence. Yung sequence ng function values is a constant sequence. A constant sequence of m minus 1s. Therefore, it will converge to m minus 1, but m minus 1 is not the... Uh, function value at m. Kasi ang function value kay m ay equal kay m. So here we have found the sequence na nagko-converge kay m. Now, generated sequence of function values doesn't converge to f of m. So that means, indeed, any, uh, uh, any integer is a point of discontinuity for the floor function. Okay? Now, kailangan nyo maging careful sa pagpili ng sequence. Kasi posible na yung mga maisip mong sequence na nagko-converge kay M ay magko-converge din kay F of M. Halimbawa, out of, um, uh, uh, say, your initial uh, your initial uh, choice of sequence, halimbawa ay M plus 1 over N. Okay? So yung M plus 1 over N will still converge to M. Yun nga lang yung mga elements niya nang gagaling sa kanan ni M. Pero kapag ka nasa kanan ka ni M, pero hindi ka lumampas ng M plus Sorry, but m plus 2. Pero hindi ka lumampas ng m plus 1, ang function value mo lagi ay m pa rin. Right? So yung sequence ng mga m plus 1 over n will give rise to a sequence of function values that is a constant. A constant sequence of m's. And a constant sequence of m's will converge to m. So that means hindi, siya, hindi ito yung hinahanap natin na disproving sequence. Okay. And this illustrates yung sinasabi ko na kanina na hindi porket na makakita ka ng isang sequence na nagko-converge kay, uh, kay x sub 0 whose sequence of function values also converge to f of x sub 0 na continuous na kagad yung function. Pusibleng hindi mo lang nahanap yung sequence na nagbibigay ng problema. Okay? Now, you can use this principle para dun sa homework. So, I guess nakikita niyo yung parallels. Or kung nagawa niyo na siya, na-check niyo ngayon na tama yung ginawa niyo. So, okay. Oh, hindi pa pala tapos yung proof. Kasi ang, ang napakita pa lang natin dito ay kung integer ka, ibig sabihin point of discontinuity ka. So we have shown that Z is a subset of the set of points of discontinuity. Pero ang claim ng example, uh, points of discontinuity are exactly the integers. Okay, yun. So kailangan natin ipakita yung pabaligtad na kapag ka, ikaw ay point of discontinuity, necessarily ikaw ay integer. But we can do it using the contrapositive by just proving na kapag ka ikaw ay hindi integer, then continue sa'yo yung function f. Alright? Paano yung nangyayari? Well, nakasulat na dyan. Alright? Pero ikukwento ko kung paano siya nakuha. 
uh, direct proof yung ginamit. Okay? Paano ginawa yung direct proof? So, nag tayo ng isang x sub 0 na hindi integer. Kasi alam na natin na kapag ka siya ay integer, point of discontinuity. Gusto ko ipakita ngayon, kung hindi ka integer, dapat continuous sa yung function. So, kung si x sub 0 ay hindi integer, si x sub 0 then will be located between two integers, namely n and n plus 1. Sure ako dyan palagi, right? Kapag ka in, pagka hindi ka integer, then napapagit na ang kanan dalawang magkasunod na integer. Tawagin ko silang n at saka n plus 1. Now, ang gagawin ko ngayon ay alam ko na kapag habang nasa kanan ako ni n, pero hindi lumalampas ng n plus 1, ang function value ko lagi ay equal kay n. Pero pag lumampas na ako ng n plus 1, mababago na yung function value ko. Magiging n plus 1 na ako hanggang makaabot ako kay n plus 2. Alright? Si x sub 0 is situated here. Remember, ang gusto natin ay makakuha ng sequence or lahat dapat ng sequence. Uh, actually, hindi ko nga ginamit nga pala dito yung sequential criterion. Ang ginamit ng handout ay yung definition ng continuity, right? So, tinignan niya yung f of x minus f of x sub 0 for any x within a delta neighborhood of x sub 0. And actually, that's easy. Pag binigyan ka ng kahit anong epsilon greater than 0, piliin mo si delta to be small enough na yung delta neighborhood ay hindi lalampas nung interval n to n plus 1. Kasi pag nanatili ka sa interval na yan, pag nasa loob ka ng n to n plus 1, yung function values laging pare-parehas. Pare-pare, katulad sila ng function value ni f of x sub 0. So that means yung right hand side, yung left hand side ng epsilon inequality will just be f of x minus f of x sub 0. But if x is very, very close to x sub 0, so close that it will not go to the left of n nor to the right of n plus 1, then sure tayo ng f of x minus f of uh, x sub 0 ay laging equal kay 0. Kasi dito sa interval na yan, pare-parehas yung function value. And how can you ensure, or what's your choice for delta para may ensure na laging nandun ka sa loob ng n to n plus 1? Well, there are several ways to do that. Pero ang isa sa madali at yun yung ginawa sa handout na yun, piliin mo si delta to be the smaller between x sub 0 minus n, representing the distance between n and x sub 0, and n plus 1 minus x sub 0. Pag kinuha mo yung mas maliit between this guy and this guy, sure ka na yung delta neighborhood ay hindi lalabas ng interval n to n plus 1. At kapag ka nanirahan ka ron sa delta neighborhood na yon, sure ka na yung f of x minus f of x sub 0 ay laging equal kay 0 which is less than epsilon because in the get-go, si x sub 0 ay isang positive, non, uh, isang positive real number. Okay? At yon yung ginawa, yun yung nasa sulat dito sa handout. Parang ang dali, no? Kapag ka kwento-kwento mo lang yung proof, parang ang dali. But try to, to read the proof. Uh, on its own. Medyo mahirap. Mas madali talaga yung mayroong graphical um, accompaniment yung proof. Let me see. Okay. So uh, let me just uh, cap off uh, today's discussion with uh, Theorem 3.4 if you don't mind. Tapos yung uh, Theorem 3.5 uh, in-assign ko na lang siya sa reading assignment dun sa kabilang section so probably I'll, uh, I'll just ask you to uh, to read the proof on uh, Theorem 3.5. Uh, if you're having troubles understanding Theorem 3.5, then you can visit my uh, Math 155 playlist from last semester. Hanapin nyo yung, yung video na about, uh, continu uh, about continuity. Drag kayo dun sa dulo. Makikita nyo yung discussion ng, ng Theorem 3.5. Okay? Para kasabay na tayo ng kabilang section. Uh -huh. Nalagay ko ba yung link dun sa playlist dun sa ating ano, sa canvas? Uh, hopefully nalagay ko dun sa video recordings dun sa idalem yung playlist ng 155 from last semester. So, pupunta kayo dun sa YouTube channel ko, makikita nyo yung, uh, makikita nyo yung uh, mga lectures ng 155 last semester. Okay. But let me go through the algebraic continuity theorems. 
These are very similar to the limit theorems that we have seen uh, earlier. Tapos yung ano nito, yung proofs nito, statements nito, ay mag-follow ng pattern na ginawa natin sa pag-prove ng limit theorems. All right? Ang gagamitin ko alang dito ngayon ay theorem 3.3. So meron kang statement about continuous functions. Theorem 3.3 will translate it into uh, a statement about sequences. Tapos gagamitin ko yung mga theorems na na-prove natin sa unit 2 to get some conclusions from uh, from that uh, convergence of sequence. All right? Tapos pag meron na akong statement about, uh, uh, meron na akong desired statement, but that will be phrased in the language of sequences, kaya ko tong i-convert pabalik sa isang statement about functional limits using theorem 3.3. Okay? And siguro I'll illustrate the process by looking at uh, uh, statement number three, the proofs of the other uh, three statements will will follow. All right, so ipapattern yun lang talaga yung proof. So tingnan natin yung proof ng statement three. Okay, so parang sketch na lang ng proof yung isusulat ko. Uh, kayo na lang yung mag-formalize. Ano? So ang assumption dito ay si F at saka si G ay parehas continuous kay X sub zero. Kung sila ay parehas continuous kay x sub 0, then by theorem 3.3, for any sequence x sub n that is properly contained in uh, the domain E and x sub n converges to x sub 0, all right, alam natin by the sequential criterion, kahit ano pa yung sequence na yan, um, sequence ng mga function values under f, I mag converge kay f of x sub 0. And lahat ng sequence of function values under g will converge to g of x sub 0. Okay? So ginamit natin yung theorem 3.3. And then now we have two statements about limits of sequences. Right? But do you remember yung algebraic limit theorems para sa sequences? Pag meron na kong dalawang sequence na alam ko pareha sila nagko-converge. Then if I form another sequence consisting of the corresponding products of the terms in those two sequences, then the new sequence will converge. So the sequence of f of x n times g of x n will converge. And not just that, I know that this will converge to the product of the respective limits of the original functions. So this guy will converge to f of x sub 0 times g of x sub 0. And then, oh, anong meron tayo ngayon? Kahit ano daw sequence yung piliin ko, yung nagko-converge kay x sub 0, yung sequence ng f times g of x sub n ay nagko-converge lagi sa f times g of x sub 0. So again, by theorem 3.3, this means that f times g is continuous at x sub 0. All right? End of proof. Di ba dali ng buhay? All right? Kung mat 36 to, ang dami nating dadaan ng manipulation para ma-prove na continuous yung function f. Pero this time, it's just an appeal to 3.3 and then use some theorems from unit 2 and then convert it back using theorem 3.3 and voila, we have the proof for the algebraic continuity theorems. So I guess you can write uh, the, the remaining proofs. All right, so uh, I don't think there would be any problem with that. Okay, now uh, again, uh, Pakipanood na lang or pakibasa yung theorem 3.5. It's just about continuity of continuous functions. Uh, sorry, uh, continuity of composite functions. Tapos pagbalik natin sa Tuesday, uh, sa Thursday, pag-usapan naman natin ay continuity sa isang compact set. All right. So uh, uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's stop here. Sakto sakto 350. Ah, hindi, 351 na pala. Uh, any questions, guys? Any concerns? All right, so kung wala na, so uh, reminder lang, uh, homework number four due later tonight. Tapos problem set number two will be coming next week. So kindly adjust uh, our, our plan your weeks ahead kasi medyo alam ko uh, super hectic na mga pinagagawa nyo. And then yeah, we'll meet again on Thursday. Until then, keep safe guys. Bye-bye.